Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you today is uh, how to create a simple interior and give it a collision. Um, we're going to start here. It's at Legion Square. I'm just going to literally grab this building, uh, make this door enterable, and have a little room in here. Basically, that's uh, that's simple. It is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight into Code Walker and we'll throw something together. Also, before we start, I'm just going to show you how I find the exterior that I want to edit. Um, so make sure you go into the selection tool, mouse select. Uh, it's a bit fiddly. Uh, click the move tool. Literally, just got to click around, move move bits around. Doesn't matter if they actually move. It's not a problem. Uh, which now I know this is the selection that I've currently got. So I'll copy that. You go into your open IV. Okay, and you look for it, and it should be this one. Okay, so yeah, there it is. Oh, and there's the door there. Yeah, so as you can see, it's empty, nothing inside, and we're just going to build a little, little room in here, and then uh, yeah, just 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 the basics to show you how it all, how I do it, I should say. Um, so yeah, let's get into 3ds and uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so I've now imported this exterior here. Um, I tend not to worry about editing this version. Reason being is because I like to use this one as say a template, for example. Um, so right now, the way I look at it, the pivot will always be at the center point, yeah, of the grid, yeah. So it'll always fix here. The the, the, the thing I don't like about this is the the way the pivot is to where the building is. I like the building to be square, straight. For me, it makes my life easier when it comes to editing. But this is why I don't edit this version because I like to get it somewhat square. Let's get the snap toggle on so I can get it as straight as I possibly can. And I mean, to me, that's pretty much square to it. So I will now build my interior within here to make it work so I'll show you what I've already done and what we're gonna achieve by the end of it so you get an idea so where this is it's fine but what I'm gonna to want to achieve by the end of it is just a little box room all right just a little tiny room like this so it's all good but well I'll, I'll do it from scratch and then uh, you can see what I've done Right, okay, so first things first, I have my interior here. So I look at it and I think, right, yeah, this is where I want my interior. Uh, I know these, these are my boundaries of what I can build before it starts popping outside, which is fantastic. There is multiple ways you can build interiors. Um, just for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to do a, a, a quick skim of what I'm going to do, which doors roughly about here. I'll just do a quick plane, nothing too dramatic. Uh, I, I have it at one sediment. Save them faces. Okay, so this is where my plane is. Obviously, you can change your perspective on every single viewport. These are each view, they're each viewports, each one. You can have it as two, three, four, as I've got it, which I've got for the front, the left side, and the top. So sometimes I change this to the back. Sometimes I'll change this to the right, and I normally always leave that at the top, and then I have perspective shaded. All right. If you have it as realistic, you'll uh, see shadows everywhere, and it'll all look dark, and you won't see the true texture. Technically, um, that's why I turn that off. Just stick it to shaded, and now you can see the actual plane. Okay, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to change this to an edible poly. Uh, I'm going to just scale it down a bit, it's a bit big, I uh, only want a small room, nothing too fancy. So we shoot this over there. Now, now I have it roughly where I want, I'm just going to use the snap toggle and I will get this level with the floor and then I'll slip to this edge and get it up to the door, so it's butted up to the door, all right? Um, now that's all done, I'm happy with that. I will select the border. 
I select Control A to select all the edges. Yes, yeah? so it goes red. You hold Shift and use the Z coordinates and lift up. Okay, and it will snap to your point of interest. I'll do it a little bit above the door, and then voila, there's your little box room. So now I select the box that I've just done. Now I select the polygon, I select the floor, I detach it. It just makes it easier for me when I am editing the walls for the textures. Like if, if I need to move it a little bit, I mean, it, it's just easier. Otherwise, if I have it all selected at the same time, I want to do the vertexes, yeah? You'll have two vertex points in this corner. So then when you try and move it, it moves the wall and the floor at the same time. So if you detach it, it makes your life a little bit easier when it comes to just doing the little, the little, little touch-ups. So now I've got my basic box there. I'll do the ceiling last. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna select the exterior. I'm gonna select the door or where the door would be. I'm gonna detach that. Okay, now I can remove the exterior. Which is good. I mean, it's it's coming for a little bit, which is it's pretty much directly on it. It's not the end of the world. And I'm going to look here, and you can see that there is an outline of that door. Now, another good thing about Edible Poly is that you can use uh, where is it? Quick Slice. Quick Slice is a very good and handy tool. You can literally just click, click, and that creates a part you can just delete nice and easy I mean there is other ways to making holes in walls bowling in and all kinds of stuff uh, I'm not gonna go into that because this is just I want to make it as simple as possible for you guys so now that door's done I don't need to do that I've already got a cut out and there's the little hole okay which is fantastic so this now should enter straight in there no problems no questions Bish bash bosh. Alright. So now I'm going to apply a texture to the floor just so you can see of how I do it. So, material editor. Um, let's just say tutorial floor. Okay. Uh, you select standard. Uh, the gims. You give it a material, a texture, as you would say. So it is like when it has. Let's say, let's say a paving slab, yeah? So now you drag and drop that onto your floor, which that now is gonna act as a paving slab in game. So you'll get the sounds, like if there's shots on it, it'll, it'll give you the same type of effect. Um, you must make sure you click show shaded material in viewport. Because when you attach your texture on the next step, which is here from GIMS, it will now show. Okay, now you can see I've renamed it to Tutorial Floor. Um, just select it, embed it, add an empty one of your choosing. Uh, let's make it noticeable. So we use these tiles, which is fantastic. That's there, it's good stuff. Uh, I'm just going to quickly UV map it just to scale it to the right size, which there is lovely. Collapse all of it. You're good to go. It's, I mean, it doesn't matter if this is bang up to it. I mean, you can play with it in Code Walker and move it up and put it wherever you need to. Um, so I'm just going to quickly skip forward. I'm going to do the walls and ceiling just to speed up the process. I mean, it's going to be a repeat of what I've just done. So you're not going to miss too much, okay? Okay, so uh, I've just quickly whipped it all together. Uh, this I'll change, obviously, into the ceiling. But what I will say and recommend is what I've done, I've basically copied the floor, dragged it up, give it a different texture. However, now this is where a problem can happen when you're using planes with just the one face, okay? So, if I select this now, there's a little flip section. So, as you can see, this is quite red. This means that texture is going to be displayed on that side. Under here, it's quite dark, which means it's not going to display a texture. So, if you... Select it with the polygon. There is an option to flip it. As you see, it changes. Okay, so now when you're inside, you will see that there is a ceiling. If I had it flipped back the other way, it'd be invisible. Okay, 
So by doing this, I now know that this is all gonna be good. It's gonna be the same scenario for the walls. Just double check it when you're using plane. Um, as I said, there is many ways you can create an interior. It all varies on how you feel comfortable doing it. I mean, I've tried multiple ways. I mean, you don't even have to create anything. You could literally just extend off of the building itself. Pretty simple. You can just select it. I'll show you quickly. You can select the edge like so. So I'll do it on here so it's more noticeable. So if you just select edge, okay, so now you see the red line, you can use extrude. You want to click the extrude, it just it extends it, okay? But this is where it comes down to detaching it each wall again. Reason being is because there's two walls connecting and there's one edge for both of them. So similar to this, as you can see, it's extruding it. There is a bit fiddly this way, but it does work. So yeah, I mean, it's it's just quicker this way. I mean, the other way, it's, it's faster if you're doing a big interior because you can just whip it round exactly where you need it. Okay, so now we have it, what we want it like. We are now going to move it. I'm gonna put it to the center of the grid because obviously that's where the pivot is. So you don't wanna, you don't want it down here because then what will happen is that your pivot will be here but your interior will be down here. So when you move it in Code Walker, it'll be, you've got to move that right over here and it just becomes really, really fiddly. Um, so I'll move on. Right, okay, so I've centered it now. Uh, and this building here, I know I'm gonna need, okay? I can delete that, I'm happy with it, I don't need it. Okay, so that's all in here, lovely doubly. But these are the ones I did earlier. I'm just gonna delete them and we'll start again. Um, I'm not too bothered. It shouldn't take me too long. So as you can see, it's all there, lovely. What you wanna do, select them all, convert them to an edible mesh, yeah? Because now we're gonna be working with edible meshes. Once you've selected it all as an edible mesh, what you need to do, you need to open up your GIMS, okay? I'll select them all, create object, go to models, model, just click. Now you can see that pivot is there. This is the pivot for the model. It always centers for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, because it's an interior, I'm just gonna put medium, low, very low to zero. And you can even add this to a thousand because you're gonna be closer to a thousand before the interior shows up, regardless. So yeah, so I'm gonna select these again. Make sure you do not select your model object, okay? Uh, just make sure you select your walls, your your ceiling and your floor, all right? And then you can go to Game Mesh Modifier. Make sure you, you select Game Mesh Modifier, so now it gives them a new modifier. If you're not sure what a modifier is, uh, this is your modifying list, which is here, okay? You can add, there's, there's many, many, many modifiers. So what I would do with this, I'll drag this down, rename it to Tutorial Interior. Okay, that didn't quite work. Tutorial interior, okay? So now that's there, you're good to go. But before, you can select them, um, should be able to drag it on there and it should connect them. Using the schematic view, you wanna link them, okay? So now these are linked. So now this is all acting, why is that called detached? That's the floor. So, got your floor, got your walls, got your ceiling. Now they're all linking to this model, yeah? So they now are identify as this is this, as the interior. So when you move the pivot in game, which is this, it also moves all of these together. It basically connects them together without having, them, having to attach them, if that makes any sense. So that is, the basics of how you make the interior. Um, I'm gonna export it and then I'm gonna throw it into OpenIV and you can get a look of it in there. Okay, so I've thrown it in OpenIV. Uh, this is it, 
you'll see it's got no bounds because the bounds is the collision. Uh, I'll be making the collision in a moment. Uh, it should be a similar process to how I just created a model. Um, yeah, again, this is basic. This is nothing special. I'm not doing something fancy. I just want to show you how to just quickly whip something together, get it in the game, and you're good to go.